Hi, I'm Carla, and I'm here to give you my thoughts on how you can start your career in tech without a computer science degree. Hey, I'm Carla, and I'm a software engineer. So the question I get most often is, how do I get into tech, and can I do it without a computer science degree? And the whole reason I'm making this video is you people they ask me like, how can I get started? You know, I, your job is so cool. You get unlimited vacation, you get to travel. And I mean, it's great and it's a lot of fun and the pay is great, but can you do it without a computer science degree? Absolutely. So there are currently over 700,000 unfilled tech jobs just in the United States. And companies are desperate for qualified individuals. There is no better time to get in than now. <laughs> So how can you get started? Now, a little disclaimer, I actually do have a computer science degree, but in every job I've had, I wanna say less than, definitely less than 10% of my coworkers had computer science degrees. I've worked with people with mechanical engineering degrees, biology, math, history, English. You definitely don't need a computer science degree to get into computer science. And my first job out of college, I was a robotic process automation engineer. So I was writing computer bots and about half of my department didn't have any college degree at all. It's really not worth it. And honestly, it's really just not necessary. I don't think that unless you're really going to get some hoity toity job in corporate America, there are ways around this and a college degree is just really expensive and especially if you're already studying something else, it doesn't really make sense to start over. And I think almost everything I learned in college can be found online for free. So it's unnecessary. So I've had this exact same conversation with a bunch of friends. I, you know, people that, you know, they're sick of waitressing or they have a degree in something that they really don't enjoy you know, single parents that they just need a job with benefits. And in my opinion, and this might be completely biased, tech is the best field to get into, uh, especially with the amount of jobs available right now. And I feel like, you know, schools don't really focus on this enough that you, first of all, don't need a college degree to work in tech. And there are uh, alternatives to get into tech. For simplicity's sake, and just for this video, I'm going to assume that you're either already studying in college or you have a college degree, whether it's an associate's, a bachelor's, it doesn't matter what field. But this advice is specifically for someone that has some post-secondary education already. If you don't have a college degree, that's totally fine. I'm actually going to make a different video and a blog post on how you can go about uh, starting your career in tech with just a high school diploma and completely possible. Like I, my first job out of college, 50% of the engineers I worked with did not have college degrees. So it really doesn't matter. If you have a STEM degree or a business degree already, congratulations, this is gonna be probably 50% easier on you. Odds are if you're in one of those two categories, you've already taken a coding class, whether it's Python, MATLAB, R, maybe at least a database class the transition is going to be a lot easier for you. And for a lot of people, getting a job in tech is about the stability and the pay and the benefits, having health insurance, uh, not working a labor intensive job. And that, that's kind of my goal is to sort of explain how do you start a career in tech when you, it's, you need it. This is about, I really need a job that either provides me better benefits, provides me better pay, or I'm at my end of the, or I'm at the end of my rope. I've spent seven years in college. I don't have a degree and I need a career. This is what this is about. So if you're considering starting a career in tech, I would recommend step zero is to learn the fundamentals of programming and see if it's something you even want to do. For a lot of people, writing code is extremely frustrating and extremely tedious. And that's okay. It's not for everybody. And there are tons of tech jobs where you aren't coding every day. Stuff like uh, positions like being a systems administrator or a network administrator, 
or even working a job in pre-sales, a solutions engineer or a solutions architect. Those people are, they're more involved with the, uh, with more decision making and more problem solving rather than writing code. And honestly, my first few months learning to write code when I was still studying business were extremely challenging. I have to learn everything twice because for whatever reason, it only sticks on the second time. And I think that getting over the first hurdle, the learning curve is steep and then it starts to flatten out. So if you can get over that first hump and just keep pushing through, I promise it will get easier. And being able to build those skills of learning on your own without a classroom, without a teacher are extremely, extremely important because that is how tech works. You need to be able to learn on your own and you need to be able to know how to search and get the answers you're looking for. I'd also recommend learning the fundamentals because even if you're not writing code on a daily basis, almost every tech job requires the basic knowledge. It's just something good. It's a good skill to have. I would recommend uh, starting off with either uh, a language like JavaScript or Python. Python is extremely human readable. So it's a really great beginner language because when, as you're writing it, it sounds just like English and you can pretty quickly learn the fundamentals there. It's also very widely used language, especially in uh, data processing, in math, it's used a lot, machine learning, and in APIs. Another really popular language is JavaScript and JavaScript is used a lot in web development. So if you're interested at all in building websites or even mobile apps, I would recommend JavaScript. Uh, it's not as easy and not as human readable as Python, but the syntax, so yeah, the way the code is written is a, lot, a little more similar to uh, other languages like C++ and Java. Not the same, but you have to use uh, more semicolons really. It's also a really good time to learn the basics of web development, so HTML and CSS. Those are the two languages that define what you see on a web page. So when you see a title or you see a block of text, HTML and CSS are the two languages that define where it is and what it looks like. Luckily, they're pretty easy to understand because everything is based on building blocks or boxes and blocks. So everything, something is always in something else. <laughs> and that's just a matter of memorizing it. So some really great resources are Code Academy. They have a bunch of free courses. Free Code Camp is a phenomenal online uh, free coding boot camp. It takes a, a good chunk of time to get through it, probably a few months if you're dedicating a few hours every day, but their program is great. I actually went through it when I was deciding on changing my major. And I have found that a lot of my friends who went through that, it gave them a really good basis to then get into uh, either early stages of their career or a coding bootcamp. And if you have maybe like 10 or $20 to invest, Udemy has some really, really great cheap intro to programming courses. So once you know the fundamentals and you've had time to play around and decide that, yeah, you do want to get a career, you, you do want to start a career in tech. Now it's time to decide what in tech you want to do. I've been really vague. Tech is a huge family of careers. You have uh, automation, you have quality assurance, you have software engineering, web development, API development, uh, systems administration, network administration, IT support, cybersecurity, mobile development. The list does not end. <laughs> So I would recommend, you know, go through the list, search IT careers, go through my article and see, you know, what interests you. Find two or three and find what steps you need to take in order to get a career in those, uh, in that field. Generally speaking, I think you're going to fall into one of two categories. In one category, you have full stack web development. Uh, front-end development, so that's writing user interfaces, back-end development, writing the business logic behind an application, 
and mobile development. For those, if you want that family of software and tech, uh, you have more or less three options. You can go through a coding bootcamp. Coding bootcamp is typically between three and six months long. It can be part-time, it can be in-person, and they can cost anywhere from free uh, to, I've seen them up to like 25 or $30,000. Uh, in the Midwest, in the United States, I'd say it's probably closer to ten dollars to $15,000. And usually they have pretty good job placement rates. So it's up to you if you want to invest that amount of money in there. A lot of them also have income share agreements where you commit to paying a certain amount of your income uh, once you graduate and you have a job. But these uh, coding boot camps, they are like trade school, but for code. So in three to six months, you're going to learn how to be a developer. You're not going to learn, <laughs> uh, you know, advanced algorithms or operating systems or binary and digital logic like I had to sit through, but you're gonna learn everything you need to be, to have a career in uh, software development or mobile development, web development, etc. Your second option if you want to do um, this type of development would be to do a lot of independent studying, a lot of maybe online tutorials. Um, and I, when I say a lot, I mean, this would probably be a 20 to 30 hour a week commitment for probably five or six months and build a massive portfolio, build whatever you can, you know, build a website, build five websites, build a website where the user can upload a picture and it's going to match them with their dog twin, build the Uber of whatever, build the Airbnb of whatever, uh, you're going to need a massive portfolio, but people do get jobs like this and learn whatever's popular in your market. So, Depending on where you live, you, there, there's going to be need for different engineers. Apprenticeships in tech are also becoming really popular. Uh, a lot of times I find that they're not really well advertised, but if you find a local business that's looking for a junior developer or especially a part-time junior developer, you know, send them an email, see if they'll work with you. I have a friend in college who he just found a job posting for a just a junior developer 20 hours a week at a local business. And he ended up working for them uh, throughout college while he was studying business. And he actually ended up doing software engineering. I'm pretty sure he builds .NET applications, but those definitely do exist. And I think a lot of it comes down to how you present yourself and who you talk to and who you know. So if you're interested in any other field uh, within tech, so automation, cybersecurity, networking, systems administration, IT support, your best bet is get a certification. I can guarantee you that you will be a hot commodity if you get a certification in any robotic process automation framework. So robotic process automation is building computer bots to do high error, super tedious computer tasks. So think of anything within like finance, accounting, at any time where you have to do a massive amount of transactions. These tests, so the three, the three largest uh, RPA platforms are Blue Prism, UiPath, and Automation Anywhere. I'm not too sure about Automation Anywhere, but Blue Prism and UiPath, they have free learning resources online, and it takes probably about between one and three months of studying, depending on how, uh, how much you study, uh, to be ready enough to take their exams. Uh, UiPath, I believe it's free, and Blue Prism, it's only $100. But if you're able to put on your LinkedIn profile that you are certified in any of these three, <laughs> you're gonna get hit up by recruiters. Don't worry, with or without a college degree. There are also other really great IT certifications like the, uh, the CCNA, uh, that one's really popular, can pretty much guarantee. I had a college professor in a networking class that he says, he's told us that at the end of the semester, we would be able to take that exam easily if we wanted to, and that we would graduate with multiple job offers. And he's not wrong. I had a friend who, she had a very crappy GPA, and she uh, she took the CCNA the last week of the semester, and yeah, the next week she had a couple job offers from local places, because people need them. People need networking administrators and networking engineers. Um, you also have Google IT support, you have AWS developer certifications, there are tons of these. If you, you know, 
if you search best IT certifications, you're going to see there are so many, there are hundreds. And it really just comes down to what do you want to do and what are the credentials needed for uh, the job you're looking for. I'd say generally speaking, most of these exams take about three months of diligent study. But it's nice that there isn't a lot of risk. They're only a few hundred dollars uh, between training materials and exam fees. So if it's something that you end up realizing you hate, you haven't lost much. So let's say that you have either gone through a coding bootcamp, you've built an amazing portfolio, or you've gotten a certification. What do you do now? You apply to any job that you see. <laughs> you go on LinkedIn, you redo your profile, uh, redo your resume, have multiple people critique it, especially colleagues and people that are in the industry. Find a friend who works in tech and just say, hey, look over my resume. Uh, I have a link to uh, OpenLeaf. They have really pretty resume templates. I really recommend those. And something I found helps a lot, and it's definitely helped a lot of my friends, is go to like Vistaprint and print out a hundred or so uh, business cards with just your name, phone number, email address, and uh, the position you want, so like full stack developer, uh, because these are really great for networking events. Go to Meetup and Facebook and find all of the local tech events. So whether there are, they have presentations on you know, a machine learning technology or it's a professional organization or a web developer meetup, even just like a code and coffee, go to those and just talk to people. I'd say people are really nice. They're more than willing to you know, give you advice, talk to you, and you never know who you're going to meet. <laughs> I had a friend who I believe he was studying business, but we went to a we have an we had an incubation center near us, and they were hosting a really fun lunch and learn. It was an entrepreneurship uh, education series, and we just sat at a table and we were chatting with other participants. And my friend, who again studying business, completely not computer science, he, he had said that he had built a couple uh, small games in his free time, and you know, he just happens to be talking to the guy that is hiring gaming engineers at a local firm. And it's stuff like that. You don't, you don't get that just from applying online. I'm pretty sure this friend ended up getting an internship with them, which he absolutely loved. And I believe he changed, the ma changed his major because of it. So you never know who you're going to meet. So hopefully you found this helpful. And uh, I'm going to hopefully try to make more. <laughs>